Hey, welcome back to another Pragmatic Works YouTube video. My name is Nate Hallowell. I'm a senior trainer at Pragmatic Works. And today I want to talk about how to automatically create child records when a parent record is added. More specifically, we're going to use a do until loop to create a specific number of child records when a parent record is added. So let's dive right in. Let's figure out what the heck Nate's talking about. And let's see how we solve this with Power Automate. All right, so let's just dive right in and see what I have going on here today. So uh, going into my solution, and this is the most basic solution you've ever seen. You know, obviously this is just for the purposes of YouTube, but we've just got two tables in here. We've got our asset table, which is gonna act as our parent table, and then we've got our asset items. So I've got a very simple model-driven app set up to uh, to support this, this theory here and see if we can get this working properly. So we've got our parent table, our assets. Let's go in and create a new asset. This is how you would have to do it you know, if we didn't have this Power Automate solution we were about to build. So let's pretend we've got some new laptops. We've got Lenovo Legions. And how many of those do we have? Let's pretend we've got 15. So I'm gonna save and close. Now, in, if we didn't have Power Automate, we'd have to go into that child table and start adding those child items, right? Put an item number, the parent asset is Lenovo Legion, and the condition is new, right? And then we'd have to save and close, do that 15 more times. So we're gonna skip all that, right? Let's delete this. I'm gonna also delete my Lenovo Legion here. And what we wanna do with Power Automate is we wanna say when a new item is created in the assets table, Right, take the total quantity, which for that last example was just 15. So create 15 child records in the asset items table that look up to the Lenovo Legion. So kind of tie those records together. So in order to do that, let's pop over back to our solution. And I'm going to build that flow right inside of our solution. So I'm going to go up to new automation, and this is going to be an automated cloud flow. We need to wait for a triggering event to happen. In this case, it's going to be when the parent record is created. So I'm going to search for my Dataverse connectors. And we want when a row is added, modified, or deleted. For the name, we'll just call this Create Child Items. We'll create this flow. And the first step, the trigger action, like when a, when a row is added, right? We don't want it when it's modified. Um, so we just want only when the parent record is added. Now, for your use case, you may have a specific column that is like a status or an approval column. And you only want to run this when it's modified. And the approval column is equal to approved, right? You don't want to add those child items until the main asset is actually approved by uh, by a higher authority, something like that. In this case, we're just doing when it's added. The table here that we're looking at is our parent table. So when it's added to our assets table and the scope, we want this when anyone in the organization adds a record. Now, let's think about this. If I add a new step, really what I want to happen is I want to add a new row. And I want to add a new row to my asset items table, my child table. But I want to do this 15 times or 20 times or whatever that total quantity was that I put in. So now is where we kind of get to the, the head scratcher of, okay, well, how do we tell the flow to do something a specific number of times? That's where we uh, get to use our do until loops. So do until is basically a loop that says, you know, you provide a condition as the first step and then add a bunch of actions, right? So do those actions until that condition is satisfied. So we want, you know, create a specific number of records until that is equal to the quantity from when the row is added. So do this 15 times. Now, in order to support that, we're gonna need to initialize a variable and we're gonna need to count the number of times we've added a child record. Unfortunately, there's no, you know, parameter to this add a new row to say how many times to do this, right? We have to kind of do that on our own. 
So in order to support this, we need to initialize a some sort of counting variable, a counter. So let's initialize a variable. I'm going to call this var counter, right? Count the number of times that this loop has happened. And that's obviously going to be an integer. So the initial value is zero, right? I want to initialize this and we have not done any sort of looping at all. We haven't done it any times, so zero. Now we can't just go to the next step and add a new row. So let me delete this action here. Now we need to add in a flow control that is called do until. So search for do until, and there it is right there. And here's what that looks like, right? So do this until this value equals this value. So in our case, we're going to do this until our var counter is equal to the quantity from when the record is added. Right, so do this until var counter equals 15 or var counter equals 20. However many times that is necessary, um, we want to do that. Do it that many times. Now we can add a new action inside of this do until loop. And that's where we want to add a new row. And again, um, I'm sorry if I didn't mention this. I'm using Dataverse for this example, but if you don't have access to Dataverse, you don't have those premium licenses, this could be done in SharePoint. This could be done uh, against an Excel table. Really, anything that stores data, you could do this. Uh, I'm just, I just happen to be using Dataverse as my data source for this example. So the table name, asset items. Okay, now one thing that I need to point out here is that my primary name column is called item number. I'm assigning an auto number, right? ITM-1000, ITM-1001. So in order for Power Automate to be able to write a record to a table that has that auto number, uh, what I first have to do and what you first have to do is actually go into that table and make the primary name column. It's gonna by default be business required. You have to make that business recommended or optional even. Um, so I just want to point that out. Like Power Automate will not be able to write that record until you change the primary name column to something other than required. So I'm going to put nothing here for the item number because it's going to auto number that for me. I'm going to assume that if I'm adding these assets, then they are in new condition. And then the only other field I need to fill out here, because I want to keep the example as simple as possible, is the lookup column to our parent table. And that's this parent asset field. So in order to, uh, to do this, right, we have when the row is added in the parent record, it's going to like, it's going to give us the dynamic content for the unique identifier for that record. If I just put in the field for that, which is um, asset, that's the unique identifier for this entity or this table, it's not going to know what to do with that. Right, we have to put some additional syntax in here for lookup columns in Power Automate. So the syntax there is we need to put the logical name for the table and the plural, I'm sorry, the plural logical name for the table, parentheses, the unique identifier. So in this case, it would look something like this. Assets, parentheses, asset, that's the unique identifier. That's going to be able to put that lookup record into our table. However, it's not, not that simple, right? Assets is not the logical name for my table. Um, usually your logical, or always your logical name contains the, the publisher prefix uh, as well. So in order to easily grab that uh, logical name for your table, uh, I'm gonna go over to just make.powerapps.com, right? Go to my tables. You can do this inside the solution as well if you prefer, but. I'm just going to go directly to tables and I'm going to go do my asset table. That's the table where I want the logical name. So if I click this dot, 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 this ellipses menu on this asset table and I go down to advanced and tools and then there's copy logical name. So now I've got that logical name for this table on my clipboard. I'm going to pop back over to my flow 
I'm going to paste that in there. So it's ATS underscore asset. And again, remember, we need to add the S. It needs to be plural for this to work. So assets, parentheses, our unique identifier from when the asset was created. And that's all we need uh, for this action here. So we want to add this new row. We want to tie it to that parent record and mark it as new. Now, looking at this do until loop, var counter is equal to zero. So zero is not equal to 15. So it's going to add a new row. Now that the loop is done, it's going to go back up to the condition. And here's where we have our second problem, right? Our var counter is still zero. So this is going to infinitely loop, right? Zero is never equal to 15. So add a new row. Zero is not equal to 15. Add a new row. So the last step we need to add here in, in our do until loop is we need to do what's called increment variable. So we need to increment our variable, which variable do we need to increment? We need to increment our var counter and by how many do we need to increment it? Just by one. Perfect. So now inside this loop, it says, okay, zero is not equal to 15. So add a new row, add one to var counter, go back up to the top. One is not equal to 15, add a new row. And it's going to continue to do that until 15 equals 15. And it's going to say, okay, 15 is equal to 15. So stop the flow. So that's really all that it takes. Let's go ahead and test this out. I'm going to save this. And there we go. With the power of video editing, it has saved almost instantaneously. And we're going to go do a manual test. And again, with the magic of video editing, it is now waiting for us to run this triggering action. So let's go back to our model driven app and let's go add a new asset. So sticking with this Lenovo, Lenovo Legion example, this is not a paid partnership, by the way. Uh, oops. So Lenovo Legion, let's say we have 22 new Lenovo's, right? So let's save and close. And I'm impatient, right? Let's just go right to the asset items table and let's see. Ooh, we've got six. Let's refresh. We've got 12. We've got 16. We've got 19, 21, 22. Okay, so hopefully it stopped right there. We've got 22 new items. Let's pop back over to our flow and we see it ran successfully. Let's see how many times it ran. Do until one of 22. So it created 22 records because when we added this row, the total quantity we put in was 22. It initialized the variable to zero. And then after it ran through, it added a new row. It incremented that variable by one. So the output of that variable is now one. So that is how you do it. That's how you create a specific number of child records. You tie that to the parent record with a flow. Um, again, this is a very kind of uh, pared down example, but I think it's, it's a very common use case and hopefully this is helpful. So if it was, please consider subscribing, like the video, and I'll be back again soon with another YouTube video for you. Thank you so much. Have a great day.